everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I've got another Mother's Day themed project and that's this very, very sweet, I, I'm not sure, it's like a domed flip lid or an arched flip lid gift box or acetate arched gift box, I don't know. I actually completely made it up as I was going along. I What I had intended to do changed throughout the, the tutorial, which you're going to see shortly. So uh, yeah, this is what I ended up with and I adore it. I think it's absolutely stunning. So the front here is just a Velcro closure and when you open it, it opens the lid with it. It's all attached and inside you have some yummy treats and there's plenty of room to pop even more in. Everything's lined so you don't see any of your you know, where you've attached the box, no glue or anything. It's got a really nice look about it. And like I said, I'm very, very pleased with how this one has come together. And then you just pop in the sides, bring it all down, and then you've got this gorgeous bag. I'd actually really like this as a handbag, so I think it's lovely. And then I've used the paper posies, I've used the wooden, I love that little wooden tag. It's worked perfectly for quite a few projects this year. And then that beautiful topper on the front with the matching papers. And yeah, I think it's, so so cute so let me show you how to make it okay so I've just got the paper posies here this is the decoupage pad so I am going to use I think this one here but I may use that one as well the tag I really like that one I might even use both but I just sat down one afternoon and just made a few of them up but that's what it comes like and then the, I don't know why I've got the six by six because I'll be using the 12 by 12. But anyway, <laughs> it's all the same. This is the chocolates. They are the Dairy Box Nestle Temptations. And I think they were, I'm sure I got these in the pound shop. Pretty sure. Because I like to buy nice inexpensive chocolates, but they make, you know, really nice packaging. So they wouldn't have been much more than that, I don't think. And then we have a template because I'm working with the acetate. I think it's going to be much, much easier for you to follow this here. So my acetate is a piece of nine by 10 and three quarters. And along the nine inch side, we're going to do these two score lines here, which are at two and seven. Now, whenever I use acetate, I try not to use the plastic, but instead use a metal stylus. You'll be able to get a better impression in the acetate. And this acetate here is the Dewcrafts. Let me grab it. It's this one here. I've got two. So I, I kind of use the Crafter's Companion for like my window sheets when I'm making a shaker card. And then I have so many bits and pieces in here, but it's this one here. And this is a great construction weight so you can make you know your gift boxes and things and I've used it to make gift bags and all kinds of different projects I've been using this one now for oh, I'd say about 18 months I'm really enjoying it and um, I've managed to pick it up at um, a good price so that's what I'm using so like I said along the nine inch side you want to score it two and seven and really push down into that acetate okay and then rotate it along the longer side. And we're now going to do these score lines here. So we're going to score at two. I'm going to go all the way down in a minute. Two, five. Make sure that's lined up. Two, five, seven, and ten. Okay, I'm just going to, I've done them once already, but you can, you know, always go over it again. So that's what we need there. And then I've got two of the pieces here, but I may well trim them. So I'm not going to tell you that in a moment. We might get the scoreboard out again later. So next we want to fold and burnish all of these folds, okay? All of the score lines. So when you're working with acetate, it's always best to it's always best to do it, you know, with your finger and your thumb first and then bring in. To be honest, actually, you don't even need to use a bone folder because it it keeps its shape. So just yeah just spend a minute making sure they all stay within the score lines if you're having difficulty it's probably because you haven't scored them deep enough so go back in again next we're going to do some cutting but i'm going to show you what you need to cut on here first because again it's going to be too hard for you to see there so you want to cut down all of these score lines on this side so imagine it's this way, you're just cutting up to this score line here. And again, you want to cut all on these ones here. So if you just do that first, and then I'll talk you through the next bit. I will take a picture of this as well and put it on my blog. Okay, 
Next, you want to totally remove these small sections here and here. And then these ones here, you want to cut in half and remove that part. So again, you're going to remove that. And these are going to be little kind of flaps to go in the sides when you close the lid. Okay, so just make sure you're working at that end where you've got the half inch section here. Is it half? Three quarters. Yeah, so you're working at the end where you've got the three quarters there. So you can see my little tabs here. I'm just going to remove those completely. And then these ones here, just in half. If you want to mark it, you know, you can, but just eyeball it. Doesn't matter if it's one slightly, you know, more than the other, like so. Now what you might also want to do, because we're going to be hiding a lot of this with pattern paper, but on these four squares here, you may want to just take a little wedge, so just cut away, you know, on a little angle there, like we do, like so, and again, bigger than the others but you know what I mean you just want to make them into little tabs like that and also take some little wedges not massive not as big as I've drawn but just take wedges off of that tab as well it's just the same as a normal gift box you know if this was cardstock I mean but it's just because we're working on acetate it is hard to see so the okay so next we want to add tape to these four squares okay these tabs so here's one of mine here. I'm using the red tape because it will stick really well to your acetate. And just pop a couple of strips near the edges. And you can see that exactly where I've put this red tape as well, which is good. Because again, don't worry if you see this when we stick it all together because we're going to be covering it with the pattern paper. But just make sure you're running it along the edges here. And then peel off the back. Oh, just do one at a time. It doesn't matter which one, literally any one. But peel off the backing. And you're going to bring it under and stick it. So there's the, five, there's the top with the tab. That's your flap. That's your lid. These four here were sticking onto the underside of these pieces. So again, ignore all of that. Make sure that's facing away from you. Each of these you're sticking under this one here. Okay, again just take the backing off the next one and bring it under and just line it up just as you would any other gift box. And then do the same on the other end. Okay, and then you should be able to fold in the, oh no that was it, you will also need to, these flaps here so you see mine, I've got one here. You'll need to take, you don't need to do the side that's, you know, at the back, but the front here, can you see it catches? You'll need to take a considerable chunk off the corner there. So you can see where I'm cutting right across there. And again on this side, because you need that to slide in. But this will help it keep its shape. And then that one will close. Like so, but we're going to add a little fastening on the front anyway as well, but you want it to go inside, which it does. If it pops out, it's because it's mine's bouncy, but now it's fallen in. So we're going to put a tab on that in a minute, but you can see there we've got our box. It's all going to work out, don't worry. Okay, so I've just been playing around and I've changed how I'm going to do things a little bit, which happens all the time. <laughs> anyway, so that you want a piece of patterned paper which is the same, well I've actually done it slightly more, so it's five and one eighth of an inch wide. So the box is five, but if you do five and one eighth, it will take into account any expansion that may have occurred when you've put the box together. So five and one eighth by 12. Yeah, and along the 12 inch side, you wanna score it three inches, okay? And this is gonna stick underneath the box here. Okay, again, we're gonna line the inside so you're not gonna see anything, but I'm just gonna get my red, tape and I'm going to cover 
don't go right from end to end because you do you might have a tiny bit of overhang ever such you know I mean like it will be minimal but just come in just a little bit but just you want to put a good amount because obviously it is the base I mean I wouldn't suggest you gonna you know you go and put something really really heavy in here but it will hold up all your you know sweet treats and jewelry and little gifts like that gift card and so on so I'm just again using the red tape which is very strong and it does really grip to the acetate and just go over it and just make sure that you can't see any air bubbles it should go darker in color like so and I'm just going to remove all the backing and then with the opening facing you so the back of the car the back of the box is going to go against the back of this you want to sit this over it so you might be better off lying it on its side and bring you know make sure it's right in the middle of that card bring it down to the score line and then bring up the base that way i think you will have more success and then you can open it up and you can go in there and really push that down again the tape should go darker in color which means you've removed all of the air bubbles next we're going to you might find maybe I should have said to do that before you can still do it now I'm just gonna just push that over but you want to just put a little curl in the cardstock so just curve it happen is we're going to add tape to the front flap here okay and we're going to stick the ed end of that to the end of this and I was just playing around and I thought wonder if that will work and I think it will so I'm just going to again run I think I can get two strips of red tape along this one so then very carefully you're going to arch this over and you want to line it up just make sure you get it straight. Okay, again, just really squeeze that between your finger and your thumb. So they can get inside the box really easily, but I just think it has a really fun way of closing. So just pop in the sides. This is gonna come over the front, and then we're gonna create our fastening with the Velcro dot and this topper, and it's gonna go there, and it will all close, like so. And then we just need to line it, put our handles on, we need to stick the back to there as well. It's gonna look really cool. Okay, I was just thinking you, you don't want to attach that bit and we wouldn't be able to now anyway because if you do have it stuck, you're not gonna be able to lift that up properly. You're gonna end up having to put a crease there. So we'll leave it like that because I think it's gonna look nice. This piece here is gonna decorate the top. Optional, you might be doing this with pattern paper anyway, but I always like to add, um, you know, my mats and layers. So this is a four and seven eighths of an inch by three quarters and I'm going to use my Kalau glue for this because then it'll give me some wiggle time. Start from the front, give yourself a nice even border on the three sides and then it should just wrap around all the way down. You might just have to wiggle it a little bit. I really like the profile. I like this, how it all, yeah, no, I'm, I like this one. Okay, so I've just gone and cut these mats and layers. So I've got this one, which is going to go in the base inside the box there, and it's three by just under five. So it's, it's the full, yeah, it's literally a smidge under five. And I thought it would be a smidge under three, but you can see that it fits in perfectly. So obviously the, the slight width of the, the, the box is, is widened just with the way that we've constructed it. So that's gonna go in the bottom there. Then I have these two for the outside and then these two for the inside side. So these are all, so it's four pieces of two and seven eighths of an inch by one and seven eighths, because I did want a little bit of the acetate to be seen because obviously it is an acetate box so I want people to see that I mean you're going to notice it straight away from the the front anyway but um, I've just covered them all with the red tape which has got so much static it's sticking to me and then I'm just going to sit this one so I can butt it right up to the end there and that will stick down so it hides and conceals all of that this make, will make a nice little keepsake 
definitely it's, yeah it's becoming nice and strong as well so the pattern I'm having on the outside just as a kind of contrast against the gingham blueprint there and then I'm going to have the gingham blueprint inside to contrast against the pattern so you should have a very very small border oh. and that's the good thing about when you're sticking onto acetate is you can remove if it slightly sticks down wrong so you might want to start from the bottom that way you can see that you're lining it up on the sides there we go that's better okay so I'm just going to go and stick these all down okay so that's that all stuck then we can attach the little you know your fastening so choose whatever it is you're going to have so I'm going to pop that one in the bottom there and then I just need to use a liquid glue on the other half so what I'm going to do is lay this down first just so I can see roughly how much I'm going to have overhanging so it's about there so I'm going to add my glue all over this half here and I can just kind of wiggle that about a little bit just make sure you've got it in the center there and then bring it down and just push that velcro down and then if you carefully just lift it up you can go in and really secure that down but now look at that I love this and then once you've got your handle on which we're going to do in a minute and then the weight that will pull up that side but I don't mind that I think it looks really really cool I just love the style I love how that opens up to reveal everything inside in fact let's pop in the goodies definitely get some more in here I might pick up another one of them because I think they're really nice inside or I might see if we can get some of the Lindor ones actually they look really good as well but you can see them in there and then I can you know there's room for like a scratch card or something as well now the more I look at this I'm now wanting to attach that but I don't want to put a score line there oh, that's creasing where I've not added enough glue it's okay you know I want to have it I like it so that it just kind of curls like that I don't know whether to add some tape in there and then just put some pattern paper on the back of that as well or to leave it so I'll give you the option I think I'm going to attach it because I just don't know whether I do like the way it kind of see now it's not even doing that though it's almost like I've shaped it oh maybe I'll leave it then so maybe if you just shape it a bit it will then not have that gap see it's disappeared okay scrap that idea stick with where it was Okay, so I want to add some hole punches in this. So what I would suggest, if you're using the cropper dial, use it upside down. Because I want to use the, the larger hole, but if you go in that way, you might punch something with this bottom one. Because that one will come out as well. Because I don't think you can lock them. I don't think you can lock one without the other. Um, so if you just do it upside down, pop that in. And as far in as it will go, make sure it's right in the middle. Just punch a hole, like so. So again, I can see that I'm lining up with that blue strip there on the gingham. So I'm just going to go in there and you can kind of see, you can kind of see where it comes down as well. I'm just having a little look. I know I've only got one of the white left. There it is. Because uh, I found that out on an older project. But I'm just going to pop them in there and then this should already still be set. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to pop it now into the eyelet part here and just set those you just squeeze them down this is the ribbon that comes in the collection I haven't actually used this yet so that is what you get of one of the colors so I think what I'm going to try and do is thread it through and have the bow so where I join it actually on the outside so let's just thread it under and then through here okay so I've put the bow in there and then I want to bring it down Kind of have it sitting along the top of that maybe you can have it higher up maybe it's better to just have it. yeah that's better actually okay so there we go so i've got this tag here i've put a little bit of hot glue just behind i might need to put a little bit behind that one as well but just so it's on the top of the tag but when it's hanging down 
it does look really really sweet I've just filled it back up with the sweets there but you've got lots of room to fit more in there I think it's really really gorgeous I'm so pleased with how that's come together you've kind of followed me on the process there because I changed it up completely to how I initially um, thought this was all going to come together but I'm, I'm yeah I'm really really pleased with it so I hope you've enjoyed this unusual arch arched acetate box I'm not sure what I'm going to call this one yet but anyway there you have it so thank you for watching today please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial bye